Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're going to start uh, doing our mounting of this uh, deer, and this is the one that we did the uh, high prep video on. So we're fixing to start the mounting process. Uh, we're going to try to go through step by step and uh, give you some instructions, show you how we do it. So y'all stick around here, and uh, we're fixing to get started. All right, guys. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our high paste. And we're going to apply it all over our form here. Uh, we're going to get it all over the neck here, around the sh kind of on the shoulders, and uh, around the cheeks here. And that way, when we slip this hide over, it should slide right over this form fairly easy. Just want to make sure you get everything coated real well. You don't want to go over the whole face yet. I'm just going to do the neck and uh, <clears throat> under where the ears would go and down the side. You, you never want to put high paste back here in the back where your seam is going to be because you don't want to be sewing in the high paste. save the brisket area for last right before I pull the hide around and staple on the back I'll flip it up and line all my all the brisket area there with my skin and uh, put all that put the glue in there and then pull it back down that way you don't have to worry about getting it all over you when you're standing behind it you just want to make sure you put a liberal amount on here you, you want your you want your hide to to stick in these areas. Slipping our hide over the phone. Make sure that you, uh, you kind of roll this hide back on itself so that when you do slide it over that you don't get glue all over the hair. Thank you. 
hang my face skin up like so. Well, when I start putting my eyes in, if for some reason I drop one of them, it'll fall down inside of the hide right here instead of hitting the floor. And I've just got a hide stretcher tool here. Just a little wood tool. It's got uh, six little metal spikes. That's what I use to just work this hide down on the form. You just want to be careful with this tool. If you get down into the uh, brisket and armpit area, they, you can't tear that hide down there because it is thin. So just be careful as you're slipping it down on here. And don't get too carried away. Just want to take your time, just keep taxing this skin down towards the brisket area down here. Kind of take a peek under here at your brisket. Make sure you're headed the right direction with it down here. Get your armpits headed down where they need to be. You don't want to pull when you pulling your shoulders down. You don't want to get one shoulder ahead of the other. But sometimes it's kind of aggravating to get it all lined back up. You want all your hair patterns to, to stay lined up.
I'm setting antlers, I like to use a four inch drywall screw, or well, it's a it's an exterior screw, but it's made kind of like a drywall screw, but it's coated. And uh, I've used the uh, I've used the regular old drywall screw. This right here is four inch. This here is three, but I use for the back of the skull plate. But I've used the the black drywall screws. But I prefer the uh, exterior coated screws better because they got a, a, a coating on them and they don't bind up into the uh, the bone of the skull or the uh, foam and the the wood in the foam. They seem to go in a lot easier. That's all there is to putting the horns on. I always want to try to take and keep, keep two fingers wide between the antler burr and the back of the eye. That's, that's just how you can check it. If you got about two, two finger width there, then you should have plenty of, you should have your skull plate cut down far enough to where that you can, uh, you won't have a problem tucking your hide up around your horn burrs. Once I do that, I'm going to come over here and take my clay. I'm going to put clay around my skull cap and I'm going to rebuild the forehead of this deal with clay. size of clay. I'll roll it out. And I like to start right here on this antler burr on the side. And lay this clay in here and pack it in. And what you're pretty much doing is you're just rebuilding the muscle structure that's in the tissue that's around the back of this deer's head. And just kind of blending the skull cap into the form. Into the Pretty much got the back of it, then all we got to do is come in <coughs> and rebuild the front half here over the forehead. <coughs> and there again, I'll just take a small little roll of clay here, roll it out, come in here and lay it in. And all you're doing is kind of like a smooth transition between the form and the forehead of this deer right here.
take a little bit of clay and cover up all these screw heads. <clears throat> And this deer skull plate's got a little ridge that runs right up the center of it. <clears throat> I always try to recreate that with clay because it, it'll make the hair pattern on the deer line up better right here in the forehead if you do. Because this, I mean, this original skull had this here to begin with, so <clears throat> it's a good idea to kind of do this. Cause like I said, it makes those, it makes the hair in those in that forehead just lay into place. It looks a lot better, I think. <clears throat> and it'll take just a minute to finish that part out and you can just kind of blend it in to your form here that's pretty much all there is to that skull plate and around like the ear butts and stuff when I do clay work. I just use regular old clay. You can get you either get it from taxidermy distributor or you can get it from Hobby Lobby. But when I do the eye work I like to uh, go ahead and use critter clay. I think I, the critter clay it dries even and don't shrink up. It works out real good for eye work. So. If you're wondering what I'm squirting in this bag, this is a uh, skin prep MBU. It, it just keeps the, uh, the, sometimes you'll have mold grow in this clay. So if you apply some of this, it keeps your clay moist, plus it also keeps that mold down. As far as eyes go, I'm not too, I mean, I, I like, using the, the Joe Meter liquid lens eye. This is, what, this is what we're putting in this deer today. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take and come in here, I'm gonna add a little bit of clay to the back of this eye. set it in here it'll lock it into place. twist that eye and work it in there. Like I said, if you leave your high like this, if for some reason your eye was to fall out, it won't hit the floor. It'll kind of catch up in this ear, right, ear skin. Right here. And you want to make sure you level the pupil with the ground. These right here are pretty light so you can see them. If for some reason you couldn't see these pupils, you can get a light and shine in here with a little flashlight be able to see them a little better. I think we're going to be good. Like I said, they're now I'm just going to take a little roll of clay and roll it out and fill the bottom section of this eye right here. That way we can uh, we'll fill, it, fill in under the eyelids and start building the eyelids on the deer. Let me zoom this in a little bit.
once you get that set in there, now your eye won't, won't follow that. You don't have to worry until it. Start working on your upper lid. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other side in and get it going. Like I said, you take, you take a flashlight, shine in this eye, and still make sure you get the pupil level. You want it level with the ground, so it looks pretty good right there. We're gonna leave that alone. trying to do you don't want to you don't want to build up this clay past the edge of your former you just want to fill it in and blend it in and make it make it match right here All right, guys, we got all our clay work done around our eyes, and we got a clay work done around our uh, skull and where it maps the form. So now we're going to go in here and we're going to, I take and uh, I'll make a rope bead of epoxy sculpt, go around the 
the antler burr here and uh, that will help lock the hide in once you sew it up you can work that epoxy skull back up against that horn burr and that hide won't move it'll lock it down we're also going to uh, apply our hide paste to the face and get all that moved up at the same time what i'll do is i'll take uh, two marble sized pieces of this uh part a part b of the epoxy skull I'll roll it up, blend it together, just like you do, hey, you know, according to the instruction. And I'll make a bead of uh, this and go all around these antler burrs. And like I said, this will this will help lock that hide in place, keep it from moving. And you don't want to flatten it out; you want to keep it round. That way, when you pull that hide up, you have a groove between this roll of epoxy and that burr. And as you when you sew that that uh skin up around that pedestal right there it'll uh it'll lock it down it won't slip down like a lot of times you have slippage up here behind the eye this will this will eliminate that problem it sometimes it, it'll still you'll have a few you know up real close to it you can have to move it around and maybe put a little super glue but this right here helps a whole lot you just want to knead this together and get it mixed up good And I'll roll it out into a roll. Pretty, you want it pretty small, about the size of an ink pen. And the bigger the horn pedestal here, the bigger the, uh, the longer the piece of, or the more of this epoxy sculpt going to have to have. But I'll just lay this up here like so, wrap it around. That'll be good to go right there. Now. That'll lock your hide in place once you get ready to sew that up. Once we get it mixed up good, we'll roll this side out into a little rope bead here. Apply it to the opposite side. Right like so. All right, guys, I got the earbuds installed on here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put some hide paste around the eyes, on the forehead. Right here. Just kinda, I'll not get it everywhere, but. I'll make sure you get on top of this clay up over this eye right here. And I like to put it up in the forehead I'll put me a big glob up in here and I'll work it back after I get the skin pulled up. Get it work back into place there. If you cut that hole out in that, uh, in that tear duct like I was showing in the other video, you gotta make sure you don't put too much high paste in the tear duct here here because when you do, that stuff will squirt out everywhere. That's just something you might want to keep in mind. Also, I put a little clay over the screw holes and stuff in the ear here. Put a little small piece over the other side. Try not to get this glue on my eye. It's on my eyeball. Just, just try to work your way around it. If you get some on there, it's not gonna hurt nothing. It's just you have to clean it off later when you start <clears throat> taxing your skin there. It just kind of makes it more of mess it gets all over your fingers and you have to try to keep it out of the hair so I always just try to just ease it around the outside edge of it there like I said put you some little dab up here on the forehead 
All right, now that we got that done, we're gonna let her down. Pull up here and get ready to start sewing her up. These earbuds work real nice, as you can tell here in the video. Once you lock them down in there, they're there. They're not going over. I've just started using these here recently, and I really do like them. It just, it just makes everything come together so much easier. Plus, you don't have to worry about these falling out when you're as you're working with the hide. Once you get them down in there, they're there. They're locked in. It's coming together real nice. When I'm sewing my deer, I like to use these big, big S curved needles. They make it so much simpler. You don't put as much pressure on your hand like on your fingers as those little ones do. Fingers can get really sore after a while when you're sewing into these hides, especially if you do a bunch of them. And all, when I'm doing these knots, when I'm tying around these antler burrs and down the back, you always want to use super glue to lock your knots down because in these areas they can start to come loose. I'll try to stay out of the shot. I don't know how well this is going to work out. We'll see. When you're sewing on these hides right here on these burrs, you want to go in deep with your needle and come out shallow. That way to give you more, your, your, your stitch will have more strength inside that leather if you do it that way. I'm just going to come in here and pull this together and knot it off. 
want to try to keep this clay out of your thread because sometimes it'll make the, the knot not want to go together right. I usually do two or three overhand knots and then I'll lock it down with that super glue. Once you do that, you shouldn't have no trouble with it. I use I use two needles. I lock this down here, lay that over the side, and I grab another needle. I roll them out, roll thread, and I'll I'll do the opposite side the same way, and I use I'll sew with two needles. That way you keep that one side locked down, and your hide won't move while you're fooling with trying to sew the other side. You don't have to do it that way, but that's just how I started doing it. It seems to work a lot better. Make sure you keep your hair pulled out of your, your stitches as you sew. <clears throat> that way it won't make your hair get all out of whack. I usually I'll sew two or three stitches and then I'll pull it tight. I usually put them about a quarter inch apart. three or four stitches in and draw them up. Like I said before, this is kind of a time consuming part of it right here, but you gotta take the time because <clears throat> You want to try to hide this seam the best you can. That way it makes out for a better mount. But it's not the most exciting part of mounting, but it is what it is. Like I said, you, if you ain't got patience, you're going to learn it when you start getting down to the sewing part.
big ass needles there. I mean, they're a whole lot easier to push through these hides. <clears throat> I've tried all the different ones. I want to get me one of the big straight, I think it's called a Glover's needle. I want to try it. I'm going to, uh, next time I do a, a tool order and order some tools from a taxidermist supply company, I think I'm going to go ahead and order one of them and give them a try. See how well I like them. This uh, this thread I'm using, it's a braided thread, and it's silicone coated, and it's it's Bandax brand, and it's a real nice thread for doing packing. I mean, it, it glides right through these through this leather, and it don't seem to cut it as bad. I know some threads I've used, you would pull it tight, and it would actually cut through the hide and rip and pull your hole out that you sewed in there. But I haven't really had as much of an issue with this as I had the, the standard just regular old taxidermy thread. As you're sewing out there you just want to make sure you keep all the hair that you can out of to the outside of these seams. If you don't, it'll stick up once the hair dries, with the hide dries. side done now we're gonna start on this other side and sew it up all right I got sewed all the way down the top of the wire here on the antler plate skull plate so now we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna tie this off put a couple of overhand knots and once we get that tied off we're gonna take this super glue and we're gonna lock this knot down right here And then I'll just cut the tag ends off of these right here and I'll come back. I'll leave these a little long, come back later to trim them up. And the next thing we're gonna do is sew down the back of this neck and put all this skin right here together. And all this uh, incisions that I'm sewing up, I'm, I'm, I'm using the thread doubled to where when I did the, uh, the repair holes and stuff, I did that with just a single thread. If you do this double, it just makes it a whole lot stronger of a, of a stitch that you put in here. I'm going to tie this off just like we did that other there. Put some super glue on lock this, lock this stitch in right here. You might have to reposition this around where you can sew into it here. It's kind of hard for me to hang on the camera here. but.
All right, guys, we got finished up sewing up the back of this net. And I've just done the regular double overhand knot. But here's what it's going to look like when you get finished. You should have a good smooth seam back here with no hair sticking up. I'm going to take and uh, put my super glue on here and glue it down. Like we did all the other seams. That'll help lock that knot so it don't come, come apart. Then I'll cut this tag end off. I'll leave it a little long, like so. What I like to do is take my needle, come in here and find that opening in that hide, right where that seam comes together. And I like to run my needle down through here and then run it out the side, like so, and then pull that knot down inside that form. And that'll hide the knot down in there. And all you do is just take your scalpel and just cut, cut your, cut your string. And now that finishes up the back half of this seam back here. And like I said, it should come together good. You shouldn't have no hair sticking up. That turned out really nice. All right, now we're gonna go around here Reset the camera and I'll start working on the eyes and the face and uh, we'll get that part done then we'll, once we finish that we'll staple the back and we'll be done waiting, ready for it to dry down. Alright guys, we got the seam all sewed up. Got the ears kind of roughed in, in the rough position. We'll work on them a little later. Now we're going to go ahead and set the eyes and then we'll glue our uh, nose down, tuck our nostrils, and then tuck in our lip skin. First thing I want to do is I want to go in here and find the front corner of my eye. And I'll take a little pick tool and I'll, I'll mark it. And then I'm going to take, and right here where the nictitating membrane would be, there's two little holes in there in that skin. As long as you didn't cut it too short, you'll be able to see it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to take a straight pin. And I'm going to lock this eye down in this front corner. And once you get this front corner locked in, the rest of it will kind of fall into place. So this is kind of one of the most important parts of, of doing the eyes, getting the front corner locked in. take that pin and push it in. A lot of times I try to get it started and then go back and find my mark that I made in there and stick that pin right in that mark. And take my little pick tool and just slide that pin in. Now don't mash that pin down all the way down there. You want to kind of leave it, you want to get it pushed in but you want to leave it where it ain't like wrinkling and dimpling the skin in. And then what you want to do is, I, I use a different little bottle of tool here, just one with a little crook on it. Come in here and pull your, taxi your skin down to where it needs to be, right here around the head. And then I want to take this upper eyelid and tuck it right up in on the clay. You might want to hold your thumb up here and kind of, so you don't mess your clay work up, but just start here in the corner and start tucking your eye. Work it all the way around the back corner back here. I 
once you get it started it should roll right up under the clay like so Then you want to turn around and do the same thing to the bottom. Take your little modeling tool or whatever. I use a little, use a little pick tool. Move your taxi the skin around and make it line up. Like so. And then there again, I start at the front corner where I got that pin at and just start tucking that eye skin down under that clay right like so like I said once you get it started it'll, it'll kind of roll right down there and lay right in the clay You just want to, when you tuck this top skin in, you want to make sure you go in and kind of, I try to set those, ash, those lashes on a 45 degree angle up in there. And you can just kind of roll that skin and up in there and as you do, it'll turn that eyelid down. <clears throat> and you want to get, get your reference pictures out and that's how, that's how you need to go about setting your eye get the right look is to take those reference pictures and just recreate what you see in nature and as far as that all right now we got that rub that eye kind of roughly set we're going to take our nicotated membrane or our tear duct we're going to go in here and find it and if you remember in the in the other video i took in a I was talking about cutting out this ice this uh slot right here in the in the tear duct itself so you can see and you gotta you gotta kind of be careful because this this uh, high paste will squirt out of here but at the same time it'll help you to get that tear duct up in there where it needs to be in that slot I usually just take a paper towel if it squirts out a little bit and just kind of dry it up but you can take your lip tucking tool and come in here and work that skin right up inside that lip, up inside that tear duct slot. Just take your tool and just push it in there. Right like so. Alright. I don't know if you can see in that get it turned around here a little bit where you can see better. <clears throat> Alright, right there. I've got that skin tucked up in there. Now what you want to do is come back in here with, with some more of your straight pins. And I like to pin one at the bottom. Kind of go down at an angle. That's a little tough, so you have to, have to use a tool to get it started. But push it down in there. Now these pins here, you want to try to kind of seat them down in there, down inside of that tear duct. That way you won't be able to see them. Push them down in that hole. Now 
I'm gonna come in here at the top. I'm gonna go in at an angle. You want to make sure if you, that you don't just catch that hole that you cut in. You actually want to make sure you're going through the skin because if you don't, it won't hold it in place. Take that one and push it in right there at the top. Like so. And you're going to come in the middle with the tear duct and you're going to go straight in with another one. And I usually put about four in here in each side. But it, it, it'll lock that tear duct in and you won't have no issues with it once your hide starts drying. You won't have to worry about it pulling out and pulling away. And I'm going to take that. I put that one, that one there, if you can see here with my little, I put it to the front side of the tear duct this next one's gonna to be to the back side, right in the center. And that's gonna hold your tear duct in place while your hide dries. That back part of that thing is kind of tough, so you have to kind of work with it a little bit. And like I said, just make sure you get your pins Hidden down inside of that hole down that tear duct. Just push them down in there. Just be careful. Don't push them so hard that you push them through the skin because you can you can poke them all the way through and then you just it just messes your whole tear duct up. It'll kind of leave a little wrinkle in it. And sometimes what I'll do once I do that, I'll come back with this modeling tool and just kind of get that skin tucked wherever else it needs to go right there. Get it down in there. Those pins kind of sometimes can distort it a little bit. But I think we're good to go right there. It should well, it's gonna turn out nice once that starts drying down. Get the back of that eye pushed back. All right, we got that eye and that tear duct set. So now we're going. I'm gonna get this other one done. And then I'll come back and we will uh, we'll glue up the front of our nose. We'll tuck our nostrils, fix our nose pad, and tuck our lips. So y'all uh, just stick around here. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, we got the eyes finished up. Now I'm gonna take and uh, <clears throat> we're gonna apply our high plate paste here to the nose. We'll pull the nose over, tuck the nostrils, and then we'll put our high paste here on the bottom. We'll tuck our lips in, <clears throat> and then we'll be ready to go and staple the back and set our brisket. So y'all just sit back here and let me get the stuff together and we'll get this going. You don't want to put a whole lot of hide paste in this nose because if you do, it's just going to squirt out and get all over your hide. So I just kind of let the let the skin work it down in there as I pull it over. Cause it'll make a mess if you, if you ain't careful. Sometimes I go and grab a smaller brush, too. This old big brush is kind of hard to do, but you take your time, you can make it work. Just want to make sure you get plenty of high paste back in this back corner right here. That should be enough for now. All right, <clears throat> we're just going to grab our nose skin. Before you pull it over, we need to take and uh, Pull our the interior of our nose out to the outside, and then and then we'll pull it over and tuck it in. Alright guys, we got our glue on. 
So we just want to slip our nose pad over. Try to keep this snow skin pulled out as we pull it down. Try not to get no glue on the hair. If you do, just take a paper towel and wipe it off. What you need to do now is make sure you there's a line up the center of these, up the deer's nose. You want to try to get it as straight as possible. Try to line all your, your hair and everything up up through here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, a, take our tucking tool here. I'm going to look inside this nose and I'm going to try to find the front corner. I'm gonna lay it in. You may have to, sometimes you may have to take a pick tool and kind of pull this hide back a little bit, but just start laying that skin down inside of that nose. And if you got it thin right, it should just fall right into place, like so. Once you get it down in there, you can uh, take a paper towel and go around in here and, and stuff a paper towel inside of this nose and it'll hold this skin into place while it dries. Just tuck your paper towel in. Usually, what I do is tear. Once I get it in there, I'll tear it off. And just keep keep working that towel in there until you get that nose set like you want it. Side, do the same thing on this side. Once you get your skin into place, just do the same thing. Take your paper towel. Start it up inside this nostril and start trying to get the skin. You have to kind of hold it because sometimes this paper towel will grab this skin and it'll move it to where you, you know, to, it'll get the hairs out of line inside the nostril. But you want to try to tuck these, these hairs. They actually roll up inside the nose. So 
So that's what we're going after. Trying to get all this, these hair patterns lined up. And it's kind of hard to do with this towel, but you just kind of, sometimes, sometimes on the third day I'll pull these towels out and I recheck these noses before they set up completely, before they completely dry out. That way if I have to move something, I still have the ability to move it around inside this nose. That looks pretty good there. And when you get get it like you want it, just make sure, like I said, you get this line up the center of this nose, get this hair pattern worked out so you can make sure everything lines up. All right, now that we got that, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip her over here, and we'll we'll tuck the top lip, and then we'll work on the bottom lip. All right, let me readjust the camera. I'll be right back with you. All right, we got that nose tucked in. Now we're gonna start working on the lips. Uh, first thing I do is come right here to the center of this nose. <clears throat> And we're gonna tuck this lip skin in right here. And I always like to start in the center because that way we'll get our nose centered up as we go. So you just wanna take your modeling tool and be careful and poke it down and just get the skin started down in here. Like we talked on that other in and talked about in the other video, you wanna be careful and not break this lower jaw. This is a hard shot to get on the video, but my, I think my hands are blocking a lot of it. Let's see if we can readjust here a little bit, get a better angle. I'm just taking this lip tugging tool and just going around, tugging this lip skin down in this slot. Once you get so far, you're gonna to have to come back here and start working on your the back corner of the mouth because you got to get all that skin tucked in before you can tuck the rest of this in. which is right here. We're gonna pull this skin down and tuck it in, start tucking it in right here. This is where I was talking about you can take your modeling tool and run it backwards in here once you get it started and it'll pull that lip line together. take the other side now find our back corner over here and do it the same way
can come up and grab your lip skin up the side right here and if you have any slack you want to take your slack up between on the sides right here and you can kind of pinch it up and bunch it up and work it down inside the foam and that'll take all the slack out of your lip if you have any in there Be careful! Don't don't get your whiskers down in here, cause you'll get them poke. You'll get them tucked down in here, and they'll be hard to get out. All right, we got that looking pretty good. So now we're gonna put some high paste on this bottom lip and tuck the bottom lip. Here's where I was talking about using this smaller brush to apply this hide paste. That way you don't get it all over the hair. What I like to do is come in here, take this brush, raise this skin up, and work some of this hide paste up in this the chin of this deer. That way when you get done, you can kind of work it back out and it'll kind of squirt back out onto the form out right here as far as you need it. I like to put it extra thick right here in the middle and I'll work it out to the sides once I get the lip tucked in. But you got to be careful right here because <clears throat> as you start laying this in and tucking it you don't want this to squirt out because it'll make a mess all in this hair you'll never it'll just be hard you can get it out but it's just it's hard to fool with and I just don't mind messing with it because you have to get the hair all wet and scrub it out with a paper towel or you'll find you a piece of old rag, a shop rag or something to get it out with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to line up our hair patterns here and then line up our, find the center of our lip and just work it down in the form like we did the top half. And this bottom, sometimes this bottom is kind of tough to get started but once you get it started it'll go. The tighter it is, the better lip line you get, so you want it, you want it pretty snug. same way we're just gonna start over here on the side where we started that back corner and just start working going down the line here I usually start it at the middle and then start at the back and kind of or start at the the back and start at the front and meet in the middle and work our slack out here in the middle
like I said, be careful. Just don't get your whisker down here because they will get caught up in this. You'll end up tucking them down inside the form. done. You want to make sure that you line your hair patterns up here as you're doing this and and be careful and don't over tuck the skin too far you just want it to go hair to hair and once you get that done that little blob of high paste we put right in here you can just take your hands and just work it right back up just squish squish it up through this skin all the way up here to the front of the lip and work it around and work it down the sides just work it all in here and it'll help lock all this in place
and that would be a pretty good looking job here on the, as far as getting the mouth tucked in. Just remember, when you're working with these deer, as you're tucking stuff, working the eyes, just constantly be trying to keep keep moving the skin in the right, you know, where it needs to be and every different, all the muscle detail. Just keep kind of taxiing it around so it'll lay flat as you're going. Because as you do it as you go, that's just less you have to do when you get it all put together. You can just kind of run your hands over it. And uh, if you have any wrinkles in the skin that you need to move around, you can do it now, as you do it as you go. But, uh, all right, I'm gonna flip this deer. I'm gonna slide it down and we'll, we'll get our stapler. We're gonna go ahead and staple the brisket and then we're gonna staple the back and that'll finish this up. So y'all uh, just hold on here while I get everything together. I'll get right back with you. All right, guys, we got everything finished up on the face. <clears throat> Got all our seams sewed up. So now all we need to do is come in here and put some high paste right here around our brisket area. Get it glued up. All the way around the side of our shoulder here. flesh this out this a lot of times this right here will stretch out so you got to kind of gather it all back together so what I'll do I'll take my little high stretching tool and I'll come in here and grab it and pull it all back up where it needs to go <clears throat> One good way to line up this hair right here on the, the brisket is, is to take and back brush it this way, you know, back brush the, it's kind of like a cow lick. You want to back brush it out and then go back the opposite way and put it all back together. And that's how you can, if that, if that line right there in the center gets off to one side or the other, that'll tell you which way you need to move the hair. Like we got a little overlap here. Where my finger is, you can take this high tool and pull that over just a little bit and it'll help line all that back up right like so that looks pretty good there I'm going to come in here and bring your armpits in on these armpits you can on the leg, you got white on the inside of the armpit and brown goes to the outside of your armpit. So in order to get that lined up, just grab, if you got enough skin on your cape, just grab out that leg skin and tuck that armpit on the inside of that corner of that leg there on that form. And I always kind of try to you want to mash this hide down into this hide paste here and help lock it in. It wouldn't hurt if you could try to give yourself a little extra hide to work with, a little slack here. And that, that looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to take our air stapler. <clears throat> we're going to come in here and I like to start right here in the center of the brisket and start putting my staples in. Like I said, make sure as you go, you keep, just keep this hair lined up. Keep your armpit in the armpit and the leg on the leg. That looks pretty good there. 
This skin will kind of bunch up right in here, so you kind of just got to taxi it around and kind of work with it a little bit. Do the other side here. Right here where these legs come together, you'll have to take a, a scalpel. And you'll have to trim this hide to where it, this will lay together. So what I'll usually do is just come up here and I'll cut it like a back up about two inches and cut a V down through it. And trim this hide out. trim that out you can come in here and just kind of lay that down tuck it in and staple it down set where we want it, we can turn the deer up and finish the back. Work over your hide, just make sure you don't have any uh, no wrinkles in the skin here. Work all your wrinkles out. Make sure you ain't got no lumps of hide paste or nothing stuck up under here. feels pretty good so let me zoom this out a little bit so y'all can kind of see what I'm doing here I'm right, just gonna take my air scraper now that I got my hide where I want it I'm gonna come around the back side and just start working my way up the form Set where I'm on the back side. That's just about good. 
at it. Now we're going to take a, make the scalp and come up here and go ahead and trim the rest of it out and get it cut off. that cut off. I'll just take a brush come in here now. Just kind of get the hair started, get everything laying down like it needs to go. Get everything headed in the right direction. That's it, we got him done. We came in and uh, we stapled the back. We come in, stapled back behind the brisket. I went over and checked the hide, make sure we had no wrinkles. Uh, got everything in the skin where it needs to be. Checked the mouth, checked the nose. We did check the eyes, make sure they're still good. The uh, ear adjustment. Uh, we'll come in here tomorrow and do the second day work. And we'll just kind of go over the eyes, check those, and uh, come back and we'll check the nose and the mouth one more time and the ear adjustment. And then we'll let it dry for two to three weeks. And once it dries, we'll come in and do the epoxy work um, and do the painting on it, and it'll be ready to go. I just want to thank y'all for watching. This is going to be the end of our deer mounting series. Um, if you haven't subscribed, uh, hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you hit that bell, anytime we have new content available, it'll, it'll uh, notify you and let you know when the video's up and ready to play. So uh, I, thanks for watching, and God bless.